Brad Town. To my right is Jeremy Hansen. Our administrator tonight is Tom Badowski and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer's present. Uh, let's see here. Additions or changes to the agenda? The fire company is here, so uh, I think they'd like uh, 10 minutes to talk about some equipment. I was suggesting right after what was the 715 slot there, again, right after the Planning Commission. Okay. There. And then one change <clears throat> I had a, uh, on the 735 uh, uh, item, it should have read approval of bond council agreement for sewer project rather than what it. Okay. <clears throat> um, so public comment? Hearing none, Treasurer's Report, Diane? Okay. Uh, the auditors were here October 1st and 2nd, which is obviously Tuesday and Wednesday of this past week. They found a, a couple entries that I had to make, so so I made those. Uh, it went very well. Uh, still, they'll be working, you know, this this was their field work, so they'll be here for those two, day and a half, actually. So they'll still be working on it. They told me they plan on having it complete by the beginning of December, and I know that's important because we need to have it for the annual report. Mm -hmm. So they don't find, they don't think there's going to be any, any issues with that whatsoever. Right. Um, I did get the draft of September 19th meeting, and I noticed in it that um, there was nothing for the approval of license and permits and vouchers. So the last time you had a meeting, you didn't, uh, you didn't approve that. And of course, I didn't know that at the time. Okay. So a lot when you do, I guess the ones for tonight, they do those as well. So everything will be in the. Middle. So so we we did it, but we did it after the executive session. Ah, okay. It was it just didn't make it into the minutes. So okay. Orca had already left by that point. Okay. So that that motion should <coughs> be reflected in the minutes. It's just, it's just not. Okay, in so there. I can go ahead and put it. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. We, we started Absolutely. off on all that. I guess mm -hmm. we did. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So yeah, if you look in your records, you should see our signatures on all of the all the paperwork okay but uh yeah yes, it was I just, did see that. we just had That's to we just we, we jug around. juggled things a bit and people okay. were still reviewing stuff okay so that works for me and that's all i've got okay okay thank you very much Diane. thank you for bringing that to our attention uh, approvals of license permits and vouchers i haven't looked at them did you go through them yeah okay, okay we both did okay go ahead yeah. Yeah. move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number uh 20g06 with checks 19609 through 19645 in the amount of $88,835.95. Also payroll warrant number 20-07 for payroll from September 15th, 2019 through, sept through September 28th, 2019 in the amount of $47,090.65. Also reconciled September 2019 bank statements for the General Fund, Sewer Commission, and Water Division. Uh, also September 29, uh, 2019 general journal entries and September tax admin adjustments. And second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, Planning Commission update on Newtown Center. Carla? Dave oh, so so Hughes is also here. He's on the Planning Commission. Um, we went to visit the South Burlington uh, project director and um, looked at the what's happening up there in their new town center and it was very impressive and I would encourage everybody to go up and look it's um, their Market Street is now connected from Dorset Street to Hinesburg Hinesburg Road yep. um, they've done I had no idea we met at the at, at the park and I didn't even know there was a park there um, there's an eight acre piece of property in there that they've they got. A, I think they put 1.2 million dollars, mm -hmm. and um, it's 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 a nice community uh, piece there. It, they, like it's that green spot. Mm -hmm. yeah, right and one of the reasons that they did that first was because it was something that benefited the community, and so it you know sort of gets people involved and gets them on board a little bit. Um, but anyway, the overall um, it was it was nice to see one of the, the other, one of the other things that I thought was really. Um, interesting was they had to put a put stormwater ponds in for um, from market street and they did it beautifully they instead of just making a stormwater pond they landscaped it they were going to put benches in they have public art in it and it was actually a nice place that you'd want to visit so um that was so it, it made me actually think about our town center area mm -hmm. and the fact that there's wetlands and there's there's wooded areas and so 
rather so rather that being negative, sort of taking that piece and turning it into a positive by making a nice place where you can maybe there's a bridge over the wetlands, you can walk through it, you can make trails. And they, she said there's a lot of uh, funds available for that type of project if you apply for grant funds. So nice. she was Alana. She was the yes, program the project manager. Director, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave, go jump in anytime. But um, Dave and I went. Tom went. Um, Dana. And Dana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's 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 just nice to see. I do want to. One of the things that um, I think is important to know is that they got the designation in 2010. And they didn't hire, I don't think they hired Alana until 2012. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, she has made a huge amount of progress. And it really, she's, she sort of coordinates everything and got, the, got everything on board. The actual money for the, for the street was, they got a grant for that in 2004. And basically nothing, sort of nothing happened. And so she got that on board and got that going. And... Um, now there's uh, there was a housing an elder housing building up and then the low income there was a that's on the flip side of that mm -hmm. of that map is more of the detail of what it looks like now the ones in yellow highlights are actually under construction now and the, you can see the balance of the buildings there's 13 buildings all in all. And this is just one piece of their, yeah. of their new town center. And the park that Carl was talking about is down here. It's off the it's just off, off the map, map but you can it's see not, it yeah, it's, a, it's, it's adjacent to what they've identified as the town center. But it's it, it's nice for sort of the community around that area. So basically, we want we wanted to come to you just to give an update on what we think we need to do to work toward our town center, and I think. Um, one of the, we're gonna we always say the grant we put the grant in and thank you for the funds and matching funds in the grant and the additional funds I appreciate the approval of that and hoping we get that and we can really move forward. Um, it's a much bigger task than I we realized initially in making this sort of master plan. So one of the things that we will start doing even probably before we know is trying to meet with the landowners, uh, get them all together. Start thinking about how you know what types of things we would need. You know where we need connections, where we maybe can put connections to, to um, Payne Turnpike, even if it's just pedestrian. Mm -hmm. um, but it's 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 it will take a lot of work. Um, but I really think that there's some momentum over there with that housing that's already been proposed, um, and then potentially new housing. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to just make sure we keep that going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and touching upon what Carla was talking about for the pedestrian access, um, you know, it was pretty encouraging to see that they could have uh, a very walkable street, uh, namely Market Street, connected to or adjacent to that park. Uh, and then up here, crossing 89, is the uh, proposed pedestrian bridge that would be connecting, uh, you know, this side of Burlington uh, over by the Sheridan Hotel uh, so that people would be able to walk across 89 safely uh, and be able to access the park as well as the rest of this new town center mm -hmm. which does have ample opportunities for shopping and the yeah. elderly housing and a lot of other things that it seems like we would like to uh, possibly look into further for ourselves here in Berlin. And when they first, when the, when Jacob first suggested from ACCD that we go to South Burlington, you know, we were all a little bit like, well, South Burlington is really different, you know, because they have a lot of resources. But the project director was actually like, no, you guys are really similar. Um, you know, we're situated between two, Mount Mary and Montpelier. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a smaller scale, mm -hmm. but um, it's, she really thought there was a lot of positives about our, our situation here. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be great to have somebody like her. <laughs> um, she's she definitely. I think a lot of it probably wouldn't have happened had Without they not her. hired her. Um, that might not be as easy for us, um, but it does help to have a champion, someone that's working. That's what they're working on, and ideally, that person sort of supports themselves through grants, mm -hmm. at least with somewhat, at least you know, and, and some with some commitment from the town. But I do think. Um, down the road, we may have to think about having someone be um, in charge, sort of that coordinates everything and puts it together. But that's down the road. Did, did they have a sense of like a cost benefit analysis, like how much the town had put into it on their own and like what they were expecting to see in terms of like tax revenues and whatnot? Uh, 
I believe that was they, a big part of her they, they, job. They, they gave, there's a spreadsheet for it. We can, we can, if you can send yeah, that yeah. Yeah. to you guys, you, you can see that. And this, the, this, the whole um, paving of Market Street eventually was from a, a and they underground utilities, the, the, the wetlands issue. It was, it was all federal funds. Sure. And so somebody went out and got to do that. And, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I sitting where I sit, I, I want to strongly encourage the select board to, to in this next round of budgeting, consider uh, budgeting monies for this, this director's position. And it's, uh, I, I really think it's the keys to the kingdom to make this project go. We, um, it, uh, we've got, a, a, the town has a lot of momentum right now. We have a project going over on the campus at, um, at the mall now, the 98 unit senior housing, We're talking about a, uh, another 60 unit residential project. Uh, we've, the public's work board is just had a meeting with the, with the mall and the, <coughs> the senior housing project to extend the, the, the water line th through that property now. Um, so there's a lot of, Good things happening, um, but I really think what what needs to, for this project to, to come to fruition is is a is a dedicated person. I, I, it's just it's more than what we can do with the staff. And is, is this person in South Burlington a municipal employee or are they a contractor? She's a municipal employee. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it was very encouraging to hear her say, you know, when I started off, I was making it, you know. Not a lot of money, you know. My price because I was right out of school and right off my first project, I, I came a little cheap. And then now she has experience. I think she's 12 years into this project, yes. and you know, I'm sure she could go and, and be in high demand somewhere else. But she's already gained all this knowledge on this one project. Mm -hmm. And if she encouraged us to take a look and see if we can find somebody who wanted to cut their teeth on on something that's a that is a long term project and. It's, stick with it. It's exciting. That was a response when I asked if we could clone her on like, somebody that was affordable. <laughs> <laughs> but but seriously, I, I mean, and I do think it does take the right person. Mm -hmm. um, she's, you know, very personable. You know, it takes somebody that can really, she, one of the first things she had to do, there was in this land that they had bought in 1970, in the 70s, that mm -hmm. this park, she said it was being used primarily by the, the residents right in one neighborhood for dog walking. And that they they had they had like a schedule so they could let their dogs run free and not be leashed and so when they started to work on this to be to be the park for the broader community you know that I said that must have been a hard conversation because they'd been used to using that for you know dozens of years so um, and she's somebody that can handle that kind of stuff so I do think it's the right you need to have the right person but I think that person's very important mm -hmm. um, to the project but we anyway we were very excited we. Um, hope that you know Slug is supportive of this project and we are going to do what we can to move forward a little bit even before we find out about the grant we're going to we're going to start meeting with the conservation commission looking at the map seeing if they have some ideas about you know some things we could start looking at and maybe even start applying for grants for this type of park thing you know park trail thing and um, as soon as we know about the grant hopefully we can get somebody on board mm -hmm. to do this master plan and we would like to to you know, keep a standing uh, couple yeah. of minutes on your agenda uh, every time you meet, just so we can keep you apprised of what's going on. Yeah. That sounds very wise. <laughs> Thanks for all but of yes. your efforts, everything you folks are doing. If you're up there, you should definitely stop by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yes, yeah. that's very exciting. But I think that I think that was a really big step forward to get the municipal planning grant in, and hopefully, you know, if that commitment was huge. I, I'm sure for you, and I really do appreciate that. You don't know what the matching funds were for all this were. They've generated a TIF district up there now. Um, and so I think they're using TIF monies for a lot of this going forward. Mm -hmm. they, they have the one developer has come in and, and agreed to do these buildings. Uh, three, two, I said two are under construction now. Third one is, is on school property. Uh, 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 so I, I think she said this building was four story. I, I thought she said it was a $25 million building. This one's under construction too, very similar, $20, $25 million building. Um, so you multiply nearly that by another 12 buildings, you could see what, what uh, the grand list impact is on that. Mm -hmm. they, they, 
the the town is paying her salary, uh, of course, um, but I think she generates a good bit of of monies that otherwise would have you know like the federal federal grant for the road the town didn't spend anything for that. Was, yeah. And then additionally, this was pretty interesting. On the back side of this map, um, right down here, this was a different developer, and they developed oh, yeah. they developed these houses. It's pretty much like instead of it's a triplex essentially, um, and it's really cool. I kind of wish they had something like this when we were yeah, in school. Yeah. But you know, it's marketed for uh, a, pro a younger professional type of person who wants to rent out a room. Uh, so each one of these is three separate units and each one would be for uh, a young professional person uh, who wants to rent out space within their their individual unit there um, and so just by virtue of having the uh, proposed construction and new town center here there would attract uh, sort of a, a unique population uh, with affordable housing who is looking uh, to, to start their life off, um, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and given that there's Norwich and Mont, uh, with you know, the college and uh, Montpelier and uh, everything that that visiting nurses, yeah, yeah, right. the hospital. And it sounded like they were being rented as fast as he was building them. Yeah, right. the, the, the the grass hasn't even been planted yet. Or selling them, rented, I should say. So, we know. truly don't have enough affordable housing. Yeah. So. And, and this, I mean, this is market housing. I, yeah. I, I don't want to get confused. That's it's market rate housing, but it's it's it's. Uh, occupied and it was, you know, very quickly occupied. So it's it's a it's a, it's a very impressive um, project. I've encouraged you as, as select board members to go up and take a look at it with what's the, what the possibility is here for for. And um, I and I think we're lucky that Berlin. because we do have we don't have a lot of landowners there. It's you know it's, yes. it's a small amount of landowners that are mm -hmm. at this point at least committed to the to the town center. So I really think this is doable, and uh, so we're pretty excited. Anything else I can share? <laughs> in this, have. In this uh, did they have like bike paths and whatnot through here, or is it just walking paths? Uh, bike paths with uh, bike racks. Uh, bike racks were put in after the bike paths because there was nowhere for people to put their bikes. <laughs> yeah. and, and these these are very wide streets that they they put in. Here. It's it's not your conventional <clears throat> street. It's very wide. It's very pedestrian friendly. Um, it it uh, just would behoove everybody just to tr take a drive up there and take a look at it. It's it's, it's going to be it's it's a quite a quite a neat thing that they have going on there. One question I have and I've always had is in terms of the town center, has it ever been looked at or is it incorporated for like a large daycare facility per se? It's, it's Has that ever been considered? It's interesting that the the other second housing you uh, project is going to, in there. First first floor now is, is thought to be going to be a daycare center. Nice, yeah. very great. Yeah. And, and actually, one of the things that we will do when we this part of the master plan process is to talk to the community and say what do you want to see in this mm -hmm. town center mm -hmm. and so i think that's a really important part and i think that's a you know a, i think we want meeting space you know some green space and, and so Absolutely. it's you know a nice little breakfast cafe you know exactly. i think there's a lot of things that that could draw people in you know, lots of room for on a regular basis yeah so Wonderful. those are the things we're, we'll be working on when we work on the master plan. Because when I think about the fact that we don't have enough affordable housing, I also think about the fact that the uh, affordability of daycare is difficult yeah. across yes. the board, throughout Absolutely. the community. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Okay. Anything else? No, that's it. I guess we'll keep thank you posted. Both. Okay, thank you very much. Very much. Fire department. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Joe Stahm, the president of the Corporation Berlin Fire Department. This is Deputy Chief Van, uh, Keith Van Eiderstein. Uh, the chief uh, was unable to make it with a personal illness going on in the family, so he apologizes. Um, what we're here to talk about today is our fleet. Um, being our, our trucks, our pumpers, our tankers, our tower. 
um, and where they currently are as far as uh, their life and uh, possible replacement schedule. And so, and the, the funding that might go with that. Uh, so, Keith, would you like to talk about? So, before we get into any more any specifics about the trucks, there's a couple important background considerations to think about. Um, one of them is a group called Insurance Services Office, ISO. They're a company that evaluates fire protection in communities and gives it a rating. Um, the fire department is contributes about 50% to that rating, the water supply 40%, and communications about 10%. And um, in the fire department section, the status of the trucks, the condition of the trucks weighs significantly. Um, so if we were to have problems or losses with our trucks, it could negatively affect the insurance ratings of the community in our town, both residential and especially commercial. Um, so we, we're always thinking about that and how can we help out this town and save the residents and the, you know, the businesses in that aspect. The other thing is uh, a group called National Fire Protection Association, NFPA. They develop the standards that the fire service lives by, essentially. Among that is um, the standards of maintenance and replacement of trucks. Uh, NFPA um, 1911 is the number that it talks about, among other things, replacement of trucks. They recently went from X amount of years you should get rid of this truck to evaluate the condition of the truck and make the determination as to if you need to replace it or not. So. Which is a better way to do it. Which is a much better way Absolutely. to do it. So getting into that, um, we have six vehicles. Two of them are straight engines. One of them is a, our rescue, which is a like the highway rescue, but it, it's also an engine. It has a pump in it. It's, it is used for um, fire suppression as well. Then we have our tower, and then we have... Um, a tanker for backup water supply and just the utility truck, which is a F-350. Engine 2 is our oldest of the engines. It's a 1989 truck. Um, we financed it ourselves. We bought it from Claremont, New Hampshire in about 2012. We financed it through VSU and the note is it's paid right now. The condition is, to put it in a word, it's out of service right now. Uh, the biggest issue is you're supposed to test your pump for flow every certain amount of time and it has failed its last pump test. Uh, we are, we've, are trying to do some maintenance to improve that and we're actually pump testing all four of our trucks that have pumps, we're pump testing them tomorrow um, to see how they they do, uh, but we are still very concerned about engine two. The other issues with the engine two is um, the kingpins on the front and the suspension in general. We had uh, the clouds down in Barry evaluate it for us, and they were they basically said that the truck was not safe to drive due to the kingpins and suspension. Uh, with those two items in mind, we took the truck out of service this summer. Um, Did you get an estimate to make the cures, the remainder repairs on those? We have looked at the estimates. What was those numbers, Joe? Well, we looked at the estimates. We also looked at the estimated value of yeah. the vehicle. Yeah. Um, the value of the vehicle, it's a 30-year-old truck, mm -hmm. um, and it's anywhere between 9000 and maybe, you know, uh, 18000 Yeah. Um, the book value of the truck. The, the truck. If you look at comparables on used fire truck websites, they're in about that range. So, and the, the, these repairs were how much? Did you have a sense what the repairs to, and to the pump and the have, pins? We didn't have um, a complete list of, of the repairs with the estimates at the you know at the time. Um, they're they're still slowly coming in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But what we're looking at is about half the value of the truck. Yeah. And the other thing we're looking at is 
so we put half the value of the truck into it to repair it. What's the next thing going to be going? It's a 30 year old truck. How much are we going to put into that? Um, it's what, what is just like NFPA says, what is the condition of this vehicle? Is it really worth trying to keep on the road right now? And, um, and I don't know your business. So, so, so the, the, is engine number two, like the backup to engine number one already? I mean, does it go out on every call or how, how often is, how often do they, you know, we have two stations. We have the one here and then we have the one in River 10. We have engine one in one station, engine two in the other station. Okay. So it is the, pr and we rotate them back and forth to keep the wear on them. So it's a, it's a primary unit. It's a primary unit, yes. Uh, just to, to note that when it failed the first pump test, we did send it down to McLeod's for, the, uh, for a flush, a radiator flush, yeah. because the reason it failed is because the engine overheated or was overheating. Um, we then since did a, a second pump test and the results were the same. Uh, we, have, we have sent it down, we've done some of the maintenance to oursel ourselves and we have sent it down to McLeod's for some other maintenance. Um, and tomorrow we'll be pump testing to see where we're at. The, uh, something to note when you get into the ISO, uh, one of the things that they look at is the how much water do you need to pump fire flow to put out a fire of certain sizes. And uh, they heavily look at your, your testing records. And if they see that a pump has failed its pump test, they give it 0% credit toward your fire flow. In other words, it just doesn't exist as far as they're concerned. So that's a, one of our also major considerations right there. And I believe the last time so, we had an ISO rating was right after the water system came in mm -hmm. and the water system improved, I, I'm like, improved our rating by like, like a half a point. So yeah. yeah, it was. And they also evaluated us in May yes. as well. Okay. They came and talked yeah. to us as well. So, so that ISO rating is good for everybody in the in the town. It's it's, it's a town wide rating. It's a town wide rating, uh, but they do give it certain areas with certain distance away from a dry hydrant gets this rating. Certain distance away from station gets this rating. Farther out, it gets a lower rating. They do get fairly specific where that is, okay. but the the water supply and the fire department will give you kind of like a base rating. And you can't improve beyond that if the fire department doesn't have this capacity. So, um, any more questions on engine two at the moment? So engine one is our other primary engine. It's a 1993 truck. So it's only four years newer. It's 27 years old right now. Um, <clears throat> we have several major components that we're being concerned on right now. Among them is the, uh, electrical system and the wiring harness in the truck and the other thing is the pump has water seals called packings that are around the transmission area and our pump maintenance technician um, has told us basically the next time we need to replace those we have to remove the transmission away from the pump to replace them which is some major cost for us it's not going to be a cheap repair um, when is that going to happen? It could happen tomorrow and it could happen five years from now. Uh, packings, the, the packings we have in it right now have some life, uh, but when those packings get used up and get to their tightest position, we'll have to replace them and that's when we have to talk about dropping a transmission to fix it. Um, uh, it has passed its pump tests, so we're not concerned about the, fire, the flow for that one. Uh, however, looking into what are we going to do with replacing the trucks, um, when you look at purchasing a new truck, it's a process that starts with us deciding what we want for a truck, putting out for a bid. Once we award the bid, the uh, manufacturer can take up to 18 months to build the truck and send it to us. So we're took we're talking it could be two years before we can get a new truck in the station. Uh, so that's why we're looking at the replacement of engine one and starting that process soon. So, um, the and, that's, and that's because 
it's still usable, it's still okay, it's passing its tests, and it's yep. serviceable, so there's no like impending doom, Correct. unlike engine two. Engine one is our number two priority. Engine two is our number one priority, and we're considering it immediate replacement right now. Uh, what we're planning on replacing it with is actually a used vehicle instead of new vehicle. A couple of considerations for that is we can get a used vehicle in short order to get this town back up to the um, fleet status that it n normally has. And the other thing is getting replacing engine one with a new vehicle, replacing engine two with a used vehicle. Since they're similar age right now, we can get the age offset. So we can get into a more offset cycle of replacing vehicles, which will be a lot easier for everybody to swallow. Yeah, rather than like two, having two on top of each other. Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. So, so is there is there a market for uh, for engine two if 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 it goes down to rent one while the town considers options? I mean, can you is is, is uh, and you can you can rent a dump truck? I don't know. Can you rent a can you rent a fire truck? Is there folks that 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 do that? There are people that do that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the biggest usually leasing. You can lease. You can you can short term lease. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, usually I hear that mostly with aerial apparatus towers mm -hmm. rather than engines. I don't know the availability of renting an engine short term, honestly, but we can look into that. It's something you may want to look at in case this, if engine two is, is gone tomorrow, you know, if it's 18 month lead time uh, or, or the price tag of a, uh, of a, of a, a used one isn't palatable to the to the, to the town, it's it's something that you you, you know you can fall back on and mm -hmm. till you till you get a a, 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 a plan here. That's so. so right. I, I think it's it's probably worthwhile. I mean, I I, I heard this pitch earlier today, okay. um, and so kind of have a decent understanding of what's going on. It probably makes sense to go through, talk about the tower, talk about the other vehicles, yep. and then and then, and then talk and, about the and then explain that. what your kind of proposed approach to this is mm -hmm. I, I, I think I think the, the renting option is probably a good one and in terms of getting something you're right getting something like <coughs> much sooner that might be a good bridge mm -hmm. okay the tower is a um, the frame of it is a 1979 truck it got refurbished by Hanover fire department in uh, 1991 it's in decent shape right now. We had the uh, the equivalent to a pump test is an aerial certification for that tower. And it just got recertified aerial. Uh, those aerial certifications, our insurance company likes to see them every couple of years. Um, you look at NFPA, they want it done every year. So um, the, <clears throat> however, it is 40 years old and it has some important systems, uh, our electric generator on it for the lights, the PTO, which the PTO basically drives the aerial, the, 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 the ladder portion itself. They're getting real sensitive and tender. Um, it's, um, it's becoming tender to work with. It's the next one, it's the number three priority for replacement for us. We haven't gone into detail about exactly what we're going to do for replacement on it yet that's still open to discussion um, then we look at the rescue which is what i talked about earlier it's a it can be a fire pumper and it can be the rescue for car accidents it's a 2003 truck um, it's in good shape right now the uh we've what are major repairs on it we had some gas tank issues. Yeah, there was a, a fuel tank. Yeah, uh, and I think uh, we did some some work on the hydraulic pump right. and on the the fuel uh, the foam. But it, it's going strong system. right now, so that that's got some good life on it. Um, a note that one in two thousand three was financed through the bonding process in the town. The town bonded for it. Uh, if I remember right, the bond was done in 2011. It's, it's paid off right now. So, and then there's the tanker, a 3,000 gallon tanker, which supplies water for fires. It's a 2007 truck. Um, it's in very good shape as well. We 
haven't had any major issues, just a few minor issues here and there. Um, we financed that one by going to the Assistance to Firefighters Grant, the federal grant program that started up uh, after 9-11. And that financed that truck about 70% for us. And we took a note out with the credit union and for the remaining 30% and have paid that one off. And then the last one is a utility vehicle, which is an F-350. Um, bought it in 2011. We financed it through a note as well. That, that note's been paid off. And um, we don't see any major issues with that right now. It, how many miles are in it? 28,000 or so? I think it's somewhere around 32. 32,000. So 30,000 miles for 2011. It, it doesn't get a lot of use. Um, not like your a, a regular passenger water bottle. What so. are you looking at in terms of the cost of replacing engine two and how much do you have to put toward it? And do you have any mm -hmm. grants that you're looking at? Good question, which I'll turn it over to Joe for. Mm -hmm. okay. Funding. So, um, replacement schedule. What we need to do is we need to replace engine two in short order. Mm -hmm. It's out of service. Um, there are um, companies out there that uh, have used vehicles. It's much like going to use dealer a lot. Um, and depending on where these vehicles are coming from, they could be suitable for the Northeast. Okay, we have a lot of things you got to look at. Um, and, you know, based off of miles and hours, um, there, are, there are few out there that would work. Uh, we have seen a few, and those do go quite quickly. Um, have talked to the credit union um, and I think the the price range as far as a used vehicle um, would be somewhere around the two two hundred thousand dollar mark no more than two hundred twenty five is what uh, the corporation allowed us to mm -hmm. look at um, the vehicles of which we have been looking at um, and like I said they go quite quickly you're looking at something that's about a hundred one hundred and fifty to one hundred seventy thousand um, dollars. These are um, 14, 15, 16 year old vehicles. Uh, you're looking if you look at a brand new vehicle, a new engine. Um, you're going to be looking at anywhere between could be easy uh, three hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, brand new. Um, so, like I said, we did talk to the credit union. Um, and we were we were okay to go through with up to two hundred thousand out of twelve year note, um, and that would cost us somewhere around nineteen hundred dollars a month. Um, what interest rate? Would, would it, it would be uh, I can't remember what she said just above prime, and that's somewhere around the five percent mark right now. She believes it would be less. Uh, it was it's less now than it was when I first started talking to her. Because I I don't know if it's comparable, but. Uh, uh, we've, the public report just got a 2.75 from rural development. <laughs> versus the rural development. I don't know if they do this kind of financing or not, but uh, the UCA rural development doesn't doesn't. But there's the other um, the other portion of USDA, and you said they're up, up, so up what up in St. J. Up in St. Johnsbury. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and so we have uh, we have a gentleman who's working on that, um, <laughs> and the USDA does have. Um, grants out there are available. Um, it has to do a lot with um, the income of your community yes. and, a, and a lot to do with yep. the community yep. itself. Um, <clears throat> Ferry City just um, received a grant, a $50,000 grant. Um, yeah. You know, that, uh, you know, deadens the pain some. That was for an ambulance, I do believe. Yes, I, I, I know the, the town of Berlin as a whole would under for the for the sewer loan would not have qualified for a USDA grant, um, uh, but if if this engine was servicing just a section of town that that you think that may have a lower income, what you can do is an income survey of, of the residents of that town, and and if you if that proves, and we did that for the water for the water project. Um, uh, the water project ending, ended up getting a couple million dollars of a multi-million dollar uh, project in grant. So um, you, you may you may look at an income survey if, if, 
it's, you could say it, it's serving this this population of town. Okay. That, that's something that Jerry's familiar with. Okay. That's great. Yeah, Jerry is the one who's looking into the USDA for us. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So. So our yes, our, our thought and our schedule would be to um, try to move forward as um, quickly as we could to replace engine two. And if um, come March town meeting going to the town for bond on the replacement of engine one. That being said, if it did pass, you're still looking at over 18 months. So you're, you're looking at almost two years from now <clears throat> before you'd even be replacing Engine 1. Um, well, you'd, you'd also be two years before you spend the money. It, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that process needs to, obviously needs to start. We need to have ver you know, yes. verification that we can draw the money and have the bond yeah. right. ready to rock. It's a two-year process, yeah. And, and, and I think the, the, other, the other thing that um, you guys made clear to me earlier is that the, the reason that they would buy a 15-year-old truck to replace engine two is because it's cheaper, it's um, mu you know, much more reasonably available in a short period of time, and then replacing engine one with a new truck is then you have a new truck and a 15-year-old truck rather than having these, again, like I noted before, these two trucks that have essentially the same age, and you have to replace them at the same time. They don't, we don't want to be in the situation of having to replace you know, two, uh, two bits of apparatus at the same time, which is exactly where we stand right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And then looking at you know, staggering somewhere in there, five years or whatever, the, the ladder truck, the uh, Tower One, which uh, you, which you didn't mention, but because Berlin has a commercial presence and has some large buildings, the only way that the fire department can reach those buildings is by using that mm -hmm. truck. The, the primary reason that we have our tower truck, our aerial truck, <clears throat> is the commercial area and the hospital. Right. Right. Uh, do we need it for residential areas? No. Does it help for residential areas? Absolutely. Right. But it's the large commercial buildings, it's the hospital, it's those areas that we really are required basically mm -hmm. to have an aerial device absolutely um, and when you getting back to that ISO um, when you get to them they <clears throat> you can have agreements in place for neighboring communities that have those apparatus you know in Barry City and, and Montpelier but they don't give you 100% credit for that apparatus because it's not yours it's you, you can't be guaranteeing that it's responding when needed um, so us having it, we get the 100% credit rather than a partial credit. And, and then looking at a replacement for that, maybe five years, I think you said something like, is that right? That's, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's gonna be down the road. You know, uh, a new, a new uh, replacement for that, you're somewhere between 700,000 to a million. So, which, so, you know, which for, that's for a new brand vehicle. new. That's for a brand, brand new. For a new vehicle. So, so, so what you were talking about, going to the credit union, that was your corporation, but it was, yes, so help me, I, mean, I apologize, I'm just ignorant on, how, how do you guys get your financing, how do you pay that note, what do you, what do you guys? We pay it through the time meeting day vote of yeah, our the, budget, the approval of the our budget. Appropriation. Okay. Yeah, so you know, our we have limited fundraising on our own, oh, our, our okay. regular annual fundraising is the amount of so it's town it's town it's town money, money. Oh, okay. it's, it's okay. town money okay. it's town money yeah. Yeah. yeah so and the the bank does look at that and they know it comes from the town so you know we currently have somewhere around 117 just under yeah just under $120,000 okay. available no 110 or 110 110 yeah we have um, we established a capital replacement fund a few years ago and that's part of our regular budget. And we were putting um, $20,000 a year, or have been putting $20,000 a year into it. And uh, the reason for that capital replacement fund and, and getting a little bit from the town every year to put in there is exactly what, why we're here right now. Uh, right now it's at $110,000. That being said, we don't want to use it all on one vehicle. You know, we, we need to strategize and how much we're going to use on what um, for that. So have you heard our town's creative on 
raising monies? Because you, you mentioned this this tower unit, it's for, for the commercial. And is there a special taxing district that can be established for you know for? So 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 one of the things that we talked about on the call was the the possibility of reaching out to these organizations that are going to be most served by the tower mm -hmm. and say, hey, can you help us out? I mean, this is really for you. Yep. Um, but yes, towns, towns certainly do that. Towns also will do things like local option taxes and say yes. we're mm -hmm. going to use the proceeds from that, which comes from the commercial sector, yes. and plow that into, yep. specifically yep. into replacing the tower, which, you know, if we looked at you know, the amount of local option tax that's possibly available um, over the course of five years, it would probably end up not, still not being quite enough to, to pay for a new tower, but I would say it gets you, gets you something pretty yeah. far mm -hmm. along the way there. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and we don't necessarily think we'll be getting a new tower. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the, yeah. you know, right, the wow part. Yeah, what well, you there know, are used vehicles out there. Absolutely. There are quality used aerials out there. Is our need for a new, <clears throat> do we absolutely need a new tower or can we get away with a used tower? That's a question that we have to address. So, but, but, but on the other hand, because those don't get as much use, they have a much longer lifespan. As I understand, there's fewer moving parts. When NFPA used to give you numbers for lifespans of vehicles instead of quality, they gave a longer number, about 10 years longer for aerial trucks. So like 30 for engines and 40 for towers. Yeah, but they, <clears throat> but that it doesn't exist anymore. It, it's all quality based now. So, what 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 I think I was I'm, I'm hearing from these guys is that they're looking to the select board. They're looking to us because we're effectively writing the checks when we're I mean when we're voting for these things at town meeting. And while we don't budget for them directly, um, you know. Making sure that we're on board with their plan moving forward, I think, is an important part to making sure that that, that, that works. And if there's alternatives that you know that the fire department board, um, which as you know, I'm I'm on. If we're not considering something that we need to be considering, like the rentals, I think it's, which are still a good idea to pursue. Um, we we need to figure out what what those are because again, it's coming out of the same the same funds. Mm -hmm. What we, we have started is we do have a collection of all the um, businesses within the town of Berlin and we are going to start a, a letter campaign um, and to uh, target those the businesses to help fund this um, replacement schedule. Uh, that would probably be something much like you were talking about as far as you know a new tower mm -hmm. or new to us. So yeah, our concrete plans right now are really <clears throat> around engine one and engine two because they're our oldest two. And then we're still in the development process for a com comprehensive for the whole fleet right now. Um, but we wanted to give you, is we're going in, we're both going into budget season. We wanted to give you advance notice, keep you informed on what we're doing, what we're thinking for the biggest ticket items we have essentially. So does the you know, the League of City and Towns, I don't know if you familiar with those folks, they, they do a lot of um, work with towns, we're a member of, of that. Mm -hmm. do, they, have a, they have a loss prevention group. You may want to ask them to come in and be just a, a, another third set of eyes, maybe look at something you guys may have not have thought about, because they deal with communities across Vermont. Maybe there's a different way to approach something like this. It, it just may be worth to sit down with them and have them come do an evaluation of what you guys have. And, and, and you know, there, again, there just may be a, another way out, something that, that for you guys to consider. Okay. I, I, I think we, as the town, would have to approach them. Okay, because the, we're the fire we're department a, is not a member. member we're a private okay. corporation. Okay. So right. we're, that well, would, then that's made, that's I think something we should do then as a town to do that. Yeah, I mean, if, so if, yeah, if there's some other sort of you know creative you know, financing or other <coughs> sort of, sort of arrangement yeah. that. We just don't know about them. If the town were to uh, approach them, we would be happy to participate. So, so I'll give them a call, but which one of you two should I 
because I don't know this. Who, right. Which one of them should I direct them to talk to you guys? Joe, no, that would be me. Joe, what's your phone number then? It's going to be 522-7448. Okay, all right. Okay. I'll give them a call tomorrow and it's time to reach out to you guys. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you for bringing this to yep. us. And on a positive note, it's nice to see the notes are paid. You know? <laughs> you throw a little positivity in there and you're doing everything good and it was nice of you to bring this forward so that we know so, what but, you're dealing with but, and what you need. But as, as a temperature check, does it seem to both of you that their, their approach to doing the immediate replacement with the use and then going to it for a bond mm -hmm. town meeting, that that seemed reasonable? It does seem reasonable to me. I think it's nice in terms of looking at the age and so you can offset the years. Um, I also like the approach that you're taking for um, targeting to get help from businesses. And I think, you know, Berlin is really expanding. And I think that expansion can also really help you at this time. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, the presentation before ours is something that all needs to be considered. <laughs> yeah, and and we're, we're paying attention to that, too. So, um, Engine 2, when did you acquire that? <clears throat> it was about 2012. Uh, yes. We got it okay. used yeah. from Claremont. 2012. And... Uh, I may be off by a year or so, but the uh, it was right about then, and it was purchased as a stopgap measure even back then. We knew it wasn't going to be a long-term purchase, and um, honestly, it, it's probably outlived what we should have done for it. Now, your situation right now that you're in where you're not going to utilize this because obviously you're, you can't, your advice is don't. Um, can you get help from surrounding areas? There is a we're part of we're part up? of a group called Capital Fire Mutual Aid Association okay. that includes pretty much all of Central Vermont, and those those are agreements. So, if something big happens in town, we have um, basically a set of we call them run cards. We have a, we have a set of assignments. If it happens over in West Berlin, we want Northfield to come in, we want Montpelier to come in, and since they're all member towns to that Capital Fire Mutual Aid group, they have promised to help us, and Great. we've promised to help them. Excellent. So the, the coverage is not lacking, but it is, we're relying more heavily on our neighbors rather than being independent right now. So our goal is to not rely on our neighbors as much as we are at the moment. Mm -hmm. so. Understandable. How many, when you bought engine uh, one, how many hours were on it? It was brand new. Brand new? Yeah. I mean engine two, sorry. Engine two. I do not know the answer to that I question. I can answer that. Mild? Yeah. I do. Not that I, miles really matter with a fire truck. It's all about engine hours. It's more about hours, and I do not know the answer to that question, honestly. Okay. Anything else? Any more questions? Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you both so much. <laughs> <coughs> Change the winter maintenance for Puaz Trail. <laughs> Do I hear a motion on that? So this this was what we had ag agreed before. Yep. So this was to um, stop plowing in the winter, winter. yet beyond that the the first house. Yep. Right. For one year. Okay. So um, I move that we direct the highway crew to not plow Cross Trail beyond the the first house for a trial period of one year. And I second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> um. uh, outdoor automobile or automobile parts storage ordinance. Tom. 
Well, I believe the conversation uh, that Dana had with me that is he sent a draft of that document to, <coughs> to council. Um, and I don't know if he spoke to you about that, but I believe council came back and said that there was some some serious issues with that. Uh, so subsequently to that, uh, Dana and I spoke. We, as you know, we adopted some new regulations, um, and and I asked Dana to consider that for enforcement that we we look beyond outdoor automotive and, and look for all zoning enforcement. Um, uh, so the, our zoning regulations talk about a municipal civil complaint ticket process. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this to you. What it is affected? It, it's um, if there's a violation. Instead of right now, if there's a violation to to uh, zoning, the the, the real the, the impetus is on the town uh, with with purse strings to to get something done. You have to series of notifications, you have to take folks to court, and, and so the town is front-loading the cost, and you hope to recoup, recoup some of that cost uh, by them abiding by, by permits and recouping the cost. With, with this, the reason this civil complaint ticket process was put in, it puts the onus on the, on the, the, the violator and the, and the property owner. So, uh, so um, it's, 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 it's you and the select board empowers town employees and I would recommend that the, the police force be the, be the ones that do it in, in consultation with the town administrator um, that if, if there's a violation that folks are notified and give and given the you know fair amount to cure the violation if they don't cure the violation then it becomes a civil ticketing thing where it become it could be whatever fifty dollars a day and and um, and then you could ticket both entities you know, to it because what happens with what happens in violations oftentimes there's the property owner which is who the, the, under the current way town does things um, is that's who the town would go after but we've seen quite often that it's a relative to the property owner that's doing this it's it may be a, a, a child or a or 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 a, a grandparent who owns the property and and a grant and so we, we see that that the that the property owners really don't have a lot of control because because of this. Under this ticketing, it could be it could be you could ticket the, the both the property owner and you can ticket the, the entity that's doing the doing the whatever the the, 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 the tenant the, the oh, tenant oh, yes okay. yeah um, and and, the, and my personal opinion I believe you will find greater cures the violation uh, violations. The town isn't up, up front uh, with the cost of this. It, the, the onus is put on on the, the property owner and the violators. Um, so I, I, Dana and I have had this discussion on. I, I, I really would, I would really like to maybe move away from this this whole auto and saying that this is the auto and just say it's it's any any violations and that, that fall under this. I don't know if it's a it's a change of charter. I just don't know the the, the, the minutia to get this done, but I, I think the town would be better served if we went to something like this rather than. The, uh, how much of that is in the zoning regs already? It's it's already it's already proved saying that we can do this again. I don't know from a charter standpoint. I just don't know what if I'd have to we'd have to talk to council to, to see what yes yeah, I mean if it's a, like a zoning enforcement matter we may already have the authority to do so but my, just need to move that's forward. my sense yeah and then you guys would authorize you have to authorize who the authorized ticketing agents are for the town to do this um, um, I, I think I think it's a it's a much cleaner and I think you're gonna cure zoning violations much more readily than we, we can now. So we're not gonna, you're not interested in anything other than uh, going with Rob? And well, I, I, I'm not the town administrator. I'm not to, you know, it was a conversation that, that Dana had with me. He's saying what, what was, what he sent to Rob, Rob didn't have, he didn't think it was valid. So Dana sent Rob this information. Yeah. Um, I just need to follow up with Rob. Rob. So Rob's reviewing it now. Rob has some health issues right now, so I don't yeah. know how much he's getting done. Right now, but okay. Yeah. yeah but, I, but I will reach out to him and nice. see about this. 
and I'll should hopefully have something back for you for the next meeting. Okay. Sure. Anything else on this, Tom? No. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. This is the one uh, approval of the bond council agreement for the uh, yep. uh, using Paul Giuliani. He has signed signed the it's a USDA form. He has crossed out all his stuff that he won't do and has signed it. Um, and I ask you folks to give that consideration for tonight. And, Hopefully, it's proved that. The compensation is listed. I'm happy to pass this around. The compensation is listed at $200 an hour plus reimbursement for incurred expenses. Fees paid periodically upon invoice. Nothing. Shocking there. Nothing outlandish. No, it says to, for him doing to do the work for a public sewer system and the legal services. He's only got two of the possible eight sections set up there. So. Paul does like 99% of the municipal bonding work. And, yeah. Yeah. Does quality work. That's true, even though he's the only restaurant in town. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's been very helpful. Yeah, I've always heard that about him. He's, not, he's been very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So those what, three sections that he will do. And what, what is this called again, Tom? It is a uh, bond council agreement. I move to approve the bond, bond council agreement for um, Paul Giuliani uh, as presented. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. This is a signature page. Signature. Today's the third. Nothing there for a date. Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, Peller's license of application for MPV healthcare. Uh, if I've talked to MPV. Uh, they have. Pro they promised to give me the check by today, but they haven't gotten me the check today. So uh, uh, I'm going to put this on to the next select board agenda. When is they, do they need their license? End of November, beginning of December. Okay. So there's this still the time. that are like setting up in the mall. Yes. Yes. Yep. Uh, the letter received regarding recreation with me from Hannah Connor. Uh, Hannah Connor, I think Dana said she uh, had an interest. She, uh, you were going to try to get her here. She couldn't make it to this meeting, so she's asked to come to the next meeting. Okay. And appointments to the Economic Development Council. I believe uh, there's a meeting of the Economic Development Council on the 9th. And. Um, that being held here? Yes. Okay. Yes. I feel. Yeah. Has it been fully? We have, we have five people on, yeah. that, on that committee. Okay. So we have council, I should say. And they're meeting here on November 7th, October 9th at 5 p.m. here. Were there any more uh, appointments uh, no. on other people who are. No. Uh, he, Dana, uh, no. Okay. There probably is no executive session. I don't have anything. Round table? Or do you have something? 
No, I was going to move to adjourn, but round table. I don't have anything tonight. For round I, I table. just the the, the uh, public's work is looking to put a bond in for town meeting 2010 to complete the water project. 2020. 2020. 2020. Okay. 2020. Yeah. Yeah. 2020. Going back in time. All right, all right, yeah. <laughs> 2020 to to complete the um, um, the water project, which includes um, smart meters for like 95 percent. They they were here about a month ago to talk to you folks about it, but they're moving ahead with that um, and uh, uh, working with Rosemary to get the, the language for your folks consideration for uh, the warning for town meeting for that. Right now it's roughly $600,000. Half of that's in the meters. Uh, but and how, how is the uh, water department doing? Are they, are we at capacity yet or are we still? Well, there's, there's two, two, two forms of capacity. There's, there's well, what are we actually using? There we go. Or half of it. Right, you have half actual capacity? Yeah. 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 Yeah, but from an allocation, we were over allocated. Okay, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, um, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye.